Just one hour before Gerald Butt's testimony in Ottawa, two prominent federal cabinet ministers arrived right here in Toronto for an announcement on a national pharma care strategy. Though the press conference was short on details, and there's some critics who say it was nothing more than a poorly executed distraction. Politicians borrow from the magician's concept of misdirection. When things are happening over here, you make people look over there. Finance Minister Bill Morneau and Minister of Health Jeanette petit taylor toured a lab at St. Michael's Hospital ahead of today's press conference. Once things got underway, the two flanked Dr. Eric Hoskins. The former provincial health minister has been tasked with chairing the advisory council on the implementation of Pharmacare. However, Hoskins was only prepared to unveil this eight-page interim report today that still doesn't address if the country should adopt a universal single-payer Pharmacare plan. Dr. Hoskins was asked how he felt about the interim report being released today and if he felt he was being used as damage control by the Trudeau government. There are other things happening today, but it was always the intention of the three of us to meet um, and for me to present as required. I know everybody's anxious to see the final report. I'm anxious to get it done as well. There's no scientist or doctor that wants to stand in front of people and present a paper without having the backup. He had no backup, and you can tell that's how he felt. The ministers were also pressed about the timing of today's announcement. It's been a, uh, a difficult week for the past two weeks, seeing two of our caucus colleagues resign from cabinet. Uh, but that being said, uh, the caucus continues to work together. We recognize that we'll continue as we move forward. We need to continue to support one another during uh, this difficult time. What would you say to individuals who are saying today's announcement of an interim report is simply smoke and mirrors? We are looking to do the work that Canadians hired us to do. We know that moving forward on an approach to pharmacare that deals with the problem that people don't have access to medication and deals with the challenges of costs for the system is critically important. Though the only thing of critical importance today, according to communications professional Tony Chapman, was the timing around the announcement of a partially completed report. What they were trying to do, releasing pharmacare before it was ready, is to misdirect you because SNC-Lavalin is hurting the Liberal Party, not only in terms of the voters' confidence in the government, but even within their own party. We're told a completed report on pharmacare will be delivered before the beginning of summer. You can also expect some sort of funding announcement in the upcoming federal budget. Now, ahead on City News, how today's interim report might shed some light on what a national pharmacare strategy may look like. I'm Adrian Gobriel. Earlier on City News, we heard from some critics who said today's federal pharmacare announcement was nothing more than smoke and mirrors, a distraction from the testimonies that were happening today in Ottawa surrounding SNC-Lavalin. Though Dr. Eric Hoskins did say that some groundwork has been laid for what a national pharmacare program might look like for Canadians. The current system of prescription drug coverage in Canada is inadequate, unsustainable, and leaves too many Canadians behind. Dr. Hoskins says months of public engagement has been, quote, eye-opening. The advisory council that he chairs is recommending the federal government take three actions. Create a national drug agency, develop a comprehensive evidence-based national list of prescription drugs that would be covered across the country, and invest in drug data and technology systems. A national drug agency would oversee national pharmacare. It would negotiate with manufacturers, and carry out health technology assessments of prescription drugs to evaluate their effectiveness and their value for money. Though the brief eight-page interim report released today did not shed light on if the Canadian government should adopt a universal pharmacare plan for all or if it would fill the gaps for those who don't have coverage under insurance plans. You can ask any doctor or nurse or anyone who's delivering frontline care and they'll tell you the same things, that patients are not taking medications because of costs or they're rationing them, their medications. Dr. Daniel Raza is a family doctor in Regent Park and the board chair of Canadian Doctors for Medicare. While he says he's encouraged by some of the preliminary steps announced today, he's still waiting for some of the big questions to be answered, like how we plan to organize and pay for a national program takes a government with political courage to really stand up and say we're going to put the public interest before we uh, before private interests and I'm, that's what I'm really watching for in, uh, in what we'll see in the budget and how uh, the form this national list of medications is developed but also in how we pay for it you know are we going to get a single-payer system that we know 
is universal and public that will reduce costs and improve access? Or, or will we continue to have a patchwork system that will do nothing to control costs? Dr. Eric Hoskins has until the end of spring to deliver the full report from the Advisory Council on Pharmacare.